Alford Bay at St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Weather, standard Caribbean, that is, gloriously sunny. The focus of attention is upon 56 small sailing craft, slivers of lightning, each a mere 13 feet and 10 inches. The range of contestants is remarkable. Registration includes social workers and bankers, oil business executives, Olympic racers, computer brains, students, professors, and even a barber. Avid sailors pulled together by a single type of craft, the sunfish. Preparation is almost as important as the race itself. The organizer of the regatta is an Olympic sailor and a real estate developer, Rudy Thompson. Heather Klein, the only woman racing. Her boat is ready for the judge's inspection. Mother of three, she will be competing on an equal basis with the world's finest sunfish sailors. Heather Klein from St. Thomas. All boats are carefully inspected. The dagger board must not be shaved to win an extra edge. The sail is regulation and stamped approved. Every boat must be exactly the same. No one will have any special advantage. Countries are identified by letters on their sails. VI for Virgin Islands. The US, a single V, Venezuela. PR, Puerto Rico. 56 racers have come here from 11 nations. From Brazil, Bermuda, Venezuela, Antigua, Aruba, England, Martinique, Puerto Rico, British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, and the United States. John Wiggins, race committee chairman, leaves the club to set a starting line. Racers have jockeyed for position prior to the start. A good position here means a better chance to place. With anticipation so strong, many boats almost jump the line. It's a memorable lineup as the final flag goes up. There are six starts over three beautiful and grueling days with high winds and white caps all the way. Sailors have survived qualifying events in their own countries with a maximum of eight racers allowed from any country. So the competition is outstanding. Among the racers, North American Sunfish singles champion Carl Knight. Boats spread out as they head for the first mark. It's a beat to windward. Overall, this is a six-leg Olympic course. Each leg is about a mile. There are three windward legs. There is also a broad reach, a close reach, and a run. Downwind. Skippers jockey for position, intent on gaining the most boat speed. Equipment is put to a test as contestants jive around the leeward mark. There are now more than 75,000 sunfish around the world, by far the largest one design class of sailing vessels afloat. Regional and countrywide contests are popular. But this event is the first World Sunfish Championship Regatta, an international occasion, the first of many to come. A sail atop a surfboard, as one wit describes the sunfish. And he may not be far from the truth, for its origin is actually the surfboard, as well as an ingenious dream with only 75 feet of sail, it can plane at speeds close to 15 knots. Crossing the finish line, Chuck Milliken of the United States, leader at the end of the first day. Others, not far behind, cross the line, run for shore, and a break between races. The post-race, post-mortem, sailed all over again by Jack Knights, Larry Lewis, and Gary Hoyt, and sports writer Hugh Wall. 
International friendships blossomed during the three-day regatta, encouraged by a Yacht Club Hospitality Committee of St. Thomas wives and friends. During the regatta, contestants and their families are also entertained aboard a unique vessel, a Russian hydroliner. It skims along atop the waves on hydrofoil. Skippers prepare for the afternoon races. Brisk trade winds and the water temperature a blissful 78 degrees, guaranteed by the St. Thomas Yacht Club. Another one of many hospitable features offered by the host in a most memorable setting. Photographed from the air, the gigantic line is impressive as boats head for the start. Tightly packed, they're off once again to match wits with a wind. Slicing through sparkling seas, there's little time to admire the perfect day. Maneuvering skillfully with hopes of a high place in the final standings, each move is all important. Because the Sunfish is a strict one design sailboat, no extra gear is permitted aboard. Competitors coming great distances with only their sail could step into a sunfish here and be at home. The sailor's skill is therefore paramount. His helmsmanship and tactics alone can bring him victory. At the mark, vocal bedlam is always the order of the day. Yells of buoy room, I have an overlap, and room at the mark prevail. With each race, the intensity mounts, and the sailors, if not grim, grow more serious as the closing races draw near. A patrol boat hovers nearby, but fortunately remains unused. Around the buoy, Larry Lewis of the U.S. hikes out, a living extension of his boat. Action like this is a sailor's dream. Fine sailing breezes and clear skies prevail throughout the series. During the last three races, winds gusted to 35, with seas running to four feet. Ideal conditions for planing, for catching a wave and riding. Spirited sailing. Classic to watch. Extraordinarily fast. And win or lose, the sailor's soul is satisfied. Now, the final moments to three days of strenuous competition for the first World Sunfish Championship. Ten racers make the winner's circle. Alex Bryan of Alcourt awards the winner's prize. The Governor's Cup goes to Ken Klein as first U.S. Virgin Islander to place and fourth overall. Third place medal to Chuck Milliken of the U.S. from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Happy winners abound. From Tortola in the Caribbean, there's Mike Shaw who plays second. And the happiest winner of all, Puerto Rico's handsome 38-year-old Gary Hoyt, an advertising executive who takes the first place medal. Point does it in the first World Sunfish Championship at St. Thomas in the Caribbean Sea.